Okay, so there we go. Now we've refactored this. This definitely looks a little bit better, right? We have our player system. It's very easy to understand. When we do cursor keys, you know, up, right, left, down, we're just setting a direction we want to go in. And when we're the CPU, uh, we do some random number. And then from that random number, we decide what direction we want to go in or no direction. That's none. Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and this is part four of our Entity Component System video series using BitECS and Phaser 3. Now, if you've not watched the first three parts, definitely go back and catch up on those since ECS is somewhat complex, and you don't want to miss that, those beginning videos to help you understand what we're actually doing here with our ECS uh, system using BitECS. So now we left off in part three with the core of what we wanted to do. We have our blue player tank up here um, that we can move with the arrow keys. And then we have our CPU tanks, the green and the red ones, that just move randomly on their own. We have a very, very basic uh, CPU um, uh, AI logic. Um, so we're, now what we're going to do in this last part of the series is do some code refactoring uh, just to show you how that can happen in an ECS system as well, as uh, so that when you're normally building it, it's highly unlikely uh, while you're going while you're going through the motions of actually getting things to work that you're going to write the most um, dry code, let's say, where there's not going to be any duplication. Uh, we want to aim to have as few duplicate code as possible so that we have one place where we know a specific piece of logic is happening. So when we do make changes there, it affects you know everyone that does that logic. And if we fix some bugs there, we can fix it in one place. And we can, uh, other people come and look at our code. We know exactly where the logic to do something exists because it's only in one place. So that's the goal here is to generally keep things, um, any specific piece of logic that does something specific in one reusable place. Now, of course, ECS is one of those patterns that can help us do this uh, a lot. But if you write it a certain way, you can always bypass that. So that's what we did in part three. For simplicity's sake, we have our player system and our CPU system. Let's look at how they are duplicating code. All right, got myself in the corner here. So we first made our player system in part uh, two. And so we just wanted to use our cursor keys. These are the arrow keys to move uh, left, right, up, down, depending on what arrow we press. So if we press the left key, the left key we wanna go left, right key, we wanna go right, down key, go down, up key, and go up, right? So that makes perfect sense. So we did that in part two. And this is fairly a uh, common pattern that we've used for doing input in phaser uh, three games. But then we added our CPU tanks, and it's these guys here. So then our CPU, of course, is similar to our player. It, the only difference being how they, how they determine uh, which type of input they're doing. And so you see there's very similar logic here, especially here, the velocity changes and the rotation changes. So what we'll want to do is have a unified way of determining what input we're using and then move this specific logic of determining what uh, the velocity for moving left is, for moving right is, uh, what your rotation should be, so that if you do have a bug somewhere and you fix it, it'll be fixed in one place. All right, so now if you've been enjoying these ECS series videos, be sure to hit like on this video and subscribe to the Arcade YouTube channel for more videos on ECS and game development for the web in general. All right, let's get started here. So what we're gonna do, we want a unified input system, and that unified input system is gonna be a new component. Well, that's how we're gonna do it here. There's probably other ways you can do it, and if you have ideas, let me know in the comments below. So let's just start by adding an input component, because we're gonna abstract out uh, how we determine what an input is, and then we can give that to a different system uh, that's not CPU or player to handle the actual movement. So let's make a input uh, component here. I'm gonna call it input. There may actually be a better name, but we're just gonna call it input. It's gonna be similarly structured. I'll just copy this. Similarly structured 
It has all the components in BIDI CSR, so that's the core of it. Uh, so we're gonna give it a direction, right? That's really what we wanna know. Like in which direction should the player tank move or the CPU tanks move? And that's gonna be, uh, let's just pick the smallest one possible. Uint eight, that's unsigned int eight. And let's make an enum here so that we can better understand which number, you know, zero to five, let's say represents not moving at all or moving left, right, up, down. So let's call this um, export enum direction. And let's say the first one is none because it's gonna start at zero anyway when we create this component and add it to a uh, tank. And so left would be the next one, right, up, down. Right, so what's going to happen is we're going to, uh, when we move, so the player, the plan here, the player system is going to just say, oh, okay, um, on your input component, we're going to just say you're going uh, left if you hit the left arrow key. And then for the CPU, it's going to say, oh, I randomly got uh, two, let's say, or whatever we decided. And that's going left. And we're going to set your direction on your input component to be left. And then we're going to go to the movement system and handle the logic for this input dot direction uh, property for each entity. So let's go to our, let's go to the player system. That's the, here. Let's start here. And we're gonna want this input component from components input. So anything that could be uh, moved will we'll have an input component. That's how we're gonna look at this. So we're gonna, at the input component. So now the player is gonna stop moving since we don't, we did not add the input component to our player, but that's okay. So let's come here and what we're gonna do instead of this is we're going to simply, let's, uh, let's comment that, we'll delete that later. We're gonna do input.direction, now index into this particular entity. And we're gonna do, let's uh, get our enum here, direction direction dot left since we got the left key is down so now down here this is the right key so right this is down and direction down let's come here this is uh nope this is up i was confused when i look at it, it says up dot is down my like, oh, yeah down no this is up and uh, this one is down okay and one more is uh, none, because we're not moving at all if no keys are pressed. So none. Okay, so that's good. Good, let's double check. Okay, great. Now let's go to our movement component, uh, movement system. Movement system. Now this one is very simple, but we can actually have our actual movement logic in here instead of just this um, like integrating the, the velocity into the position here. So let's go import from import from components inputs. And I think we'll need direction. Let's just take it uh, here. Let's say also input. Now all our CPU tanks should stop moving since they no longer, yeah, they, they have the rotation from the CPU system. That's, that's being set. Uh, okay, so here we're gonna want to know the directions. So let's uh, go into index into our direction uh, array inside the input component for our entity here. So remember, this is just an integer, a unsigned integer from zero to five. That's what we're doing right now. Our enums is none, left, right, up, and down. So let's do a switch direction. And we can do case direction dot, let's just say none here first. So none, let's go back to our player system. None is of course this, which everything is zero. So let's just cut that movement system and uncomment. So that's none, just like we had before inside player. Case direction, let's do left. And now left is what we had over here. So let's cut that. Go to our movement system, left. Uncomment. Yeah, we need our rotation as well. Rotation. And 
we'll want that here. All right, let's go back to our player system. Now we want write. You kind of see what we're doing here. We're basically moving that previous logic that was in player and CPU um, just into this movement system. Let's call this write. Given that both players and CPUs need to move and there's a movement system, it seems like a fair place to put this logic so that it's shared. Um, and then we want to pick up, just write these real fast, direction dot down. I'm gonna fill it in here. So this is up, movement system up. Lastly, let's get the movement system down, or um, the logic for down. Let's come here. Boom. Okay, so that's good. Now, players still shouldn't be able to move, and our CPUs aren't moving because we still need to actually add components to our entity. So let's go back to game. Let's just make our player work first. So position sprite, let's say we do add component this.world um, input and our tank. That's our player tank. So let's come back up here. So now it should just work. Yep. Now I'm using the, the arrow keys and my player is moving. Everything works simply because we edited it or we updated our systems and then we just attached the proper components for um, our systems to actually operate and then so our player is using this new logic. So now our player system is smaller, right? You can kind of see it on just one screen here. And we no longer have to do any of that logic for setting um, velocity x, y or the rotation angle. Now our CPU system had the old things here, similar. So just like we did there, we're gonna import the input component, import components, input, input, and I think we'll need direction, and let's come here, input. And so just like our player, what we're really doing here um, is we just want to say we're going left. How we go left can be handled by a different system. So input.direction index into this ID, this entity's ID, direction.left. So we're just going to do this quickly. This is exactly the same concept as the player. So we no longer have to share any complex logic here. All we do is set a value on our uh, input component. Okay, and no, that's it. So now our CPU should move. Let's see. Oh no, they won't move because our player still moves, right? We have to add that component to our CPUs. So let's come here to our CPU, add component this, this dot world um, input and our tank, tank. There we go, and our tanks are moving again. That seems about right. Yep, that looks good. Okay, so there we go. Now we've refactored this. This definitely looks a little bit better, right? We have our player system. It's very easy to understand. When we do cursor keys, you know, up, right, left, down, we're just setting a direction we want to go in. And when we're the CPU, uh, we do some random number. And then from that random number, we decide what direction we want to go in or no direction. That's none. And then in our movement system, given what we have in the input component, the direction uh, property of that input component, we uh, update our velocity, and then just like before, we add our velocity to our position to actually move our tank, our entity. And that's it. So now whenever we wanna change how movement works, so let's say you know, we wanna make speed here not uh, five, let's say we actually go const speed, let's say it's 10, um, and then we go here, speed is just a very simple example. We only had to edit this in one place instead of two places previously. You see we're so fast now. 
Um, so of course, if we had this logic in two places, you would know that you have to go in and edit it in two places. And you know, now we have the speed as a um, const variable here. We can always change it. Let's just say we go super slow. Right, everyone is a snail. So now, you know, we having this, this variable is also another way to make it only one place for any specific data. Now, even better would be if you would put the speed, if it was the uh, speed was dependent on an entity, you put on a different component, get that component here and then operate on it. Right, so there's more you can do here. But the key here is we've now moved this logic to one system, the movement system. And for any entities where we have the position, velocity, rotation, and input components attached to those entities, we're going to do the movement logic on them. And it's all in one place. Any edits we make, we can make here. And it's easy to understand what's going on. And that is the uh, gist of a entity component system. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, but we went through using ECS with BitECS uh, in Phaser 3. Now, if you enjoyed this video or this series, be sure to hit like and, and subscribe to the Arcade YouTube channel. It is the best way to support this channel if you enjoy the videos that we're producing. And as always, we're going to produce more videos on Entity Component System. Um, with Phaser 3, uh, we're going to talk about other game development frameworks, libraries, patterns um, throughout the year here. So definitely subscribe, like this video, and until next time, see you later.